Hi, in this tutorial um, we've got a lot to get through. We're going to have to see if we can get through it all in our allotted time. Um, first of all, we're going to cover how to color your object from an image texture. We're going to create a, a globe. We're going to create the planet Earth. We're going to color that with an image texture. Then I'm going to show you how to make parts of it more reflective, specifically the oceans, with a roughness map or a specular map. Uh, we're then going to um, add a bump map to the globe to have a little bit of kind of texture, like a, a lit texture to the continents. We'll have a transparency map for some clouds, an environment map for some space, and then we'll move into using the compositor to denoise and add some glare. So first things first, I'm going to delete my default cube and I'm going to add a UV sphere. So there is my planet, basically. That's really all the modeling we're actually going to do here, um, basically. So I'm going to shade it smooth. So I right click on it, shade smooth. And now we need to put a material onto this. So I'm going to go to my shading workspace here and go to my material editor, add a new material. We'll call this Earth. And I need to add an image texture for the base color. So I can do that either in the node editor or over here on the side panel. Click on this little dot and add an image texture. And from there I can open an image texture. So I'm going to go to my folder where I have all of my planetary assets and I've got my earth color map jpeg here and for a few versions now blender has uh, had these primitive shapes that you add like the UV sphere they've been UV unwrapped by default which is super handy so these things wrap automatically um, correctly and it looks really good so that's great um, and you can see where this added an extra node that just plugs into the base color input on our principled shader. And that's, it really is as easy as that to get our, um, our principled shader uh, using a, an image texture for its color instead of just a color swatch, you know, just like bright red or bright green or something like that. So just plug that in there and we get a much more complex result than we could just using our swatch. Okay, so let's move on to, you can see that this entire thing, we've got a little bit of a specular highlight here. Um, and everything is uniformly reflective. The continents are reflective, the oceans are reflective. And that's kind of fun, but not very realistic. So I need another image texture. I have a specular map and I'm going to kind of show you what this looks like. We've got an image viewer here and I'm going to open our specular mask here just for reference so you can kind of see what that actually looks like and basically what it's going to do is we've just got data here that says okay black is water, white is land and we're going to use that to inform our roughness value so that whatever is black is going to have a roughness value in this case of zero because it's pure black and whatever is pure white is going to have a roughness value of one so not reflective at all so I'm just going to duplicate my image texture node that I already have here and I'm going to open actually sorry I've already opened this within blender so I can just pull this down and select my earth spec mask there take the color output and plug that into our roughness value. You can see now that the continents are very matte and the oceans are very glossy. And that's a little too glossy. Um, by the way, if I had something with the opposite data, let's say I had an image where the continents were black and the oceans were white, but I still wanted this same effect, I could just add a color inversion node in between and that will have the opposite effect. So now you can see that our continents are really glossy and our oceans 
have a matte finish, but that's obviously not actually what we want. Now this is too glossy, so um, I need to find a way to tone that down basically um, because realistically from space the oceans aren't going to be this reflective. So I'm going to just plug our specular mask into our color input for a minute so that I can kind of see what's going on here and I'm going to modify this a little bit so let's add and go to color and pick brightness and contrast and from here I'm just going to try to brighten those oceans into a gray instead of a pure black so that they don't put a pure mirror finish on those glossy oceans. Now let's plug that back into our roughness value and that looks a little better already. Let's plug our color back in. And you can see now that we've got a more diffused reflection from our oceans and we still have a matte finish on our continents. So that's that's perfect. And if I want that reflection to diffuse even more, I can just push this brightness up a little bit and that works. Okay, so now let's add a bump map here and a bump map isn't too difficult to add you just kinda have to know how so once again I'm going to duplicate my uh, image texture node here and I'm going to click open and go to earthbump.jpg over here I'll kind of show you what that looks like since we have it open and basically what that does is it uses grayscale data uh, to show elevation so white is high and black is low and it doesn't actually add that geometry to the earth but it does um, make the light act like the geometry is there so we'll get highlights and shadows for instance on the rocky mountains here but we can't just plug that straight in normally it would go into our a bump map goes into our normal value we can't just plug that straight in we have to add go under vector and click on bump and that kind of informs blender what to do we'll go from color to height and normal to normal and then you'll kind of see what that does here and that basically shades it as though there is actual geometry going on there so that's kinda nice but I have a problem with this map and that is that for some reason it has a little bit of odd data in the oceans oh sorry one thing you also need to do um, that's a little bit helpful change your color space on a bump map from sRGB to non color data I find that works a little better but you can see that that actually amplified the problem in our oceans so we've got to think here do we have information do we have data available that can tell this bump map not to affect our oceans and in fact we do because we already have this specular mask that we already used here um, you can see that it is basically just a data set that shows the difference between oceans and land so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the color output from our specular mask and pick, put it into the strength on our bump map and that will actually fix the problem there basically it just takes the bump entirely out of the oceans it turns the strength down to zero because it's black those are black pixels and it leaves the strength up high on the continents so that's great that's what we needed there Okay, so I'm going to add some clouds to this. So let's go back to our layout and I'm going to label this sphere Earth. Let's go into a material preview viewport so we can kind of see what's going on. And I'm going to add a second sphere. So Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere. And since this is going to be the clouds, I want it to be a little bit above the other, the Earth proper. First of all, I'm going to shade it smooth, and then I'm going to scale it by a factor of 1.001. So I'll just tap S, 1.001, Enter. And you can see that's my scale now. And that what that does is that just puts this sphere a little bit bigger than the Earth. It can't be the same size. 
Um, by the way, again, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine because by default it will handle transparency, whereas with Eevee you have to make some tweaks for that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my shading uh, workspace here. I'm going to make a new shader for this sphere and call this Clouds. We'll name the sphere as well, Clouds. And to kind of do the same thing, just click base color. We want an image texture. And I'm going to open an image texture. And we have our earthclouds.png. And that's just a black and white image showing some clouds. I also have, and there are multiple ways to do this, but I also have a earth transparency map for these, or a clouds transparency map. So I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to use the non-color data but I'm going to open earthcloudstransparency.png sorry non-color data got to select it again I'm going to go from my alpha value here to my alpha value here in my shader and what that will do it will look wrong in a material preview viewport but if I actually go to cycles shaded a cycles rendered viewport then you can see that my clouds are now transparent okay and they're a little bit off so they're actually they're a little bit above the earth so they're actually casting shadows which is kinda cool okay so that's basically how I make my earth now we're going to add an environment map so this actually looks like space so let's go back to our normal layout here and this is probably the easiest thing we're going to do today so let's just go over here to our world properties and for our background color we're going to click here and select environment texture we're going to go to open and I downloaded a CC0 space HDRI from Reddit um, and it's just called space HDRI.png I'll click on that and an HDRI is a pretty cool thing. What that actually does is it helps to light our scene. And so now you can see I've got this cool space background. That's working nicely. Um, and if for some reason your HDR background isn't showing up, it might be that you are in a orth an orthographic viewport. So orthographic by default means that you know there's no no uh, for short well no uh, no lines of perspective no vanishing point so basically we're just staring into one pixel at a time here so as we twirl our view around the background changes color but we don't see any detail so just tap 5 on the numpad to go back to a perspective viewport and that HDRI should show up okay last steps we are going to um, do some compositor settings here so that this looks cool when we render it so I'm gonna to go to this compositing workspace and I'm gonna check this use nodes checkbox and basically what we have right now is just our render result is straight into our outputs but uh, we can actually affect that with some effects so first I'm going to go to my render layers here I'm gonna turn on the denoising data render passes um, so that gives me this denoising normal and denoising albedo so I can now add a filter to denoise my image and this is a better way to denoise your image than checking the little box under render settings from my from my experience this works a little better because you can tell it to take into account the normals and the albedo and that's going to denoise our image really well the other thing I want to do is I want to add a glare effect and I use this effect a lot it's it's a very effective method of getting some kind of camera imperfections into your result so the streaks tend to be a little heavy for me I usually do a fog glow and I turn the quality up to high and then if we tap F12 to render our image
it's actually going to render everything out here and then as soon as it finishes it's going to apply those compositor effects so you'll be able to kind of watch those calculate down here there will be a little progress bar and then we'll get some glare on our image and it will denoise which will also be kind of a nice result and here comes the compositor compositing initializing execution okay and that's basically how you use the compositor and use images for those kinds of maps. I hope this was helpful. Thanks.